deliver you. So there's a sense of bringing, it, bringing out from oppression or freeing, freeing, releasing. Then there's the idea of redeeming, release again, but in another sense of redeeming a slave because I'm a cousin of the slave and I want to get this slave out. Or um, The idea of redeeming is, uh, is the person knows me, is close to me, is my relative, and they're going to be my, the word for redeemer is goel, they're going to be the person who's going to look after me because we're so close in relationship and they will, they will buy me out of this terrible situation. They will redeem me. They'll buy me out of it. And don't forget, uh, Israel, so, uh, the firstborn son of God. Israel is the firstborn son of God. And deliver you, deliverance. So they're all words to bring out or free, to release or redeem and to deliver all words for salvation. So I'm going to save you. And then I'm going to adopt you as my people. I will be your God. You will be my people. That extraordinary sense of covenant. And then you will know that it is I, Yahweh, your God, who has done it all. Then you'll know it deep in your guts, deep in your heart. You'll know that experiential knowledge It'll be that faith that is unshakable. And final thing is, I'll bring you to the land that I swore I would give. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And I'll give it to you for your own. The promised land now is, is envisaged as our rightful homeland. This has been given to us by God. We live with that still today, don't we? In Israel. It's our homeland. God gave it to us. So there's no talk of sharing it with anybody else, really. Okay. Now this time, when Moses speaks to the people, they're not overjoyed and whatever. It says the people are so desperate and so broken and they are, so they can't hear this good news yet. This is the good news, but they can't hear it yet. They don't believe it yet. They're too broken. And that's true of a way of looking at when we go anywhere on mission, the people's basic needs must be answered first, or they can't hear the good news. Then there's a genealogy. Now, the priestly school loves genealogies, especially to tell people that, uh, well, the priests are pretty good. Look at their genealogies. It says about families, but we know the family means tribes, don't we? It speaks about Reuben and Simeon, and they fade into obscurity. So we talk about the ten tribes a bit later. We don't talk about the twelve so much, because they're no longer there. Then we look at Levi and we look at Aaron and the four sons. Now that's pretty significant. This is the priestly school who wants to emphasize the importance of priests. Levi and Aaron and their descendants. And can I just conclude by hopping a little bit into next week's lecture by saying in verse, chapter 6 verse 28 to chapter 7 verse 7, We've got a recapitulation of everything. But we've got it from the priestly school. We've got a sense that Yahweh is deeply in control of all this. It's Yahweh who's heart and Pharaoh's heart. And all the Egyptians are going to know. The whole of Egypt's going to know this. All is ready now for the battle between God, Yahweh, and Pharaoh. Thanks, everybody. God bless you and thanks, thanks for listening to us.